welcome, welcome. I'm here with the lovely Cody. I see everyone in the chat saying hello. We've got Alessandra who's like, hey, am I in the right place for Elise's tutorial? Yeah, you are, but this is actually gonna be focused on Cody. So welcome. We've got Wade Henry in the house. We got Kayla saying, whoop, whoop, let's go, Cody. She's giving you pop, she's excited. Uh, all we're all excited. Friends. Are those all your friends? Oh yeah, all of them. Oh, super cool. <laughs> so much support. So yeah, I'm Elise. I'm here with Cody. Before we get started, I just want to talk a little bit about Daily Creative Challenge. Have you guys heard of it? If not, you should really check it out. It's a 10-day challenge that requires our live audience to create designs around a specific theme. So if you start to do this, you can actually share your designs on the Adobe Discord and get feedback, get mentorship, get part of a community. And it's going to be starting right after today's session. So at at 2 p.m. Pacific, right after the stream, there's going to be a daily creative challenge replay. Check it out. So anyways, welcome, Cody. I'm super excited for you to do your coffee delivery <laughs> app today. Um, I know that you, out. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know that you put on your, your LinkedIn that you have a focus on creating fun, interactive, and intuitive products. So I know you're going to bring a really fun yeah. session today. Let us know a little Check bit about out. what you do and like yeah. a little bit about what you're planning on doing. Y'all, before we get started, I will have you know that I do have coffee delivered and it is on its way as we speak. So if coffee does come up, <laughs> that is why <laughs> I was trying to decide between coffee and Red Bull and decided if we're going to do a coffee app, then we might as well get coffee delivered. So with that being said, I do have Red Bull in my photo, but let's get started on, on me and who I am and where I've been. So I am a product designer and I call myself a Red Bull enthusiast just because like caffeine and design world and energy, I kind of just feel like brings so much to the table whenever everyone's like, I don't know where to start, or maybe they're just tired. You have the Monday slumps, you down a Red Bull or drink a coffee and then you just get started. So super high energy, love all the caffeine consumption that I can. I am from Lafayette, Louisiana. Three most important things to me, I have crawfish, if you guys don't know anything about crawfish, please start commenting in the thread. Me and Elise will talk about crawfish this entire time. Uh, in the middle is my wife and my two kids, Reese and Quinn. Quinn has just turned six months. She's tiny right there. Uh, and Red Bull and caffeine on the right-hand side, just because, like I said, we're here to design a coffee app. We're here to go full throttle. So where I've been... So I am currently at Land Trust, big outdoor recreation logo right here. And my passion is startups. I have not worked in any enterprise companies. I have not done uh, anything with really teams over 20 to 30 people. Uh, I like to get in super early with CEOs, really understand what their vision is, and then take all the excitement that they have and bring it to the product world. Let their vision come to life through design. Now, of course, there's some pros and cons that comes with that because CEOs can sometimes be very direct in what they want, maybe not understand the design process, but I think that's our job as designers is our responsibility to try and educate them. And Elisa, you do education all the time with designers and people uh, with many different workshops. So uh, you could probably speak with that too, is that people think that it's this black box and that we don't know where to start, or sometimes it can be confusing into how to make the best decisions or the right decisions. But what we're gonna go through today is really talking about methodology and how we can use process to guide those decisions and making sure that CEOs are comfortable with trusting designers and giving us a seat at the table, so to speak, we hear a lot of the times uh, and getting their vision out in the world and getting customers using it. So. A little bit of background, I, I've worked at Wavelength, which is a body positivity psychology app similar to, uh, you guys are very familiar with Headspace. Uh, they kind of do something similar around that world. Uh, pain Scored, which is a pain management survey for elderly, which you can see right there, the demographic is very different. Uh, we have people who are really caring about what they're eating and what they're doing in terms of exercise all the way to like, 60 to 70 year olds trying to manage their pain with their doctors. So those, those two things are on very opposite sides of the spectrum. Uh, then we have supplied, which was like an e-commerce for boutique owners. So not the big pop-up Nike stores, but 
uh, some smaller retail shops and they needed an app and a website. Then the, the one that I most recently finished up with, which is Waiter, which is a competitor of Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub, uh, all of those. And then now we're at Land Trust, the Recreation Access Network. So been, been around uh, in the startup world. So let's look at some work. What do you guys think? Yeah, let's look so, at some work. <laughs> so let's see it I, in action. <laughs> I, I, I love doing case studies. Like I tell friends all the time that I feel like case studies is a really good way for us to convey the design process in a visual way, because it's not just a bunch of black and white photos or it's not just um, pretty pictures. It's a way for us to combine the process and the photos. So in this version right here, you can see we have a little product overview. Uh, description of the problem is always helpful. And then breaking down our product funnel analysis here, uh, getting into what, what makes that conversion? Like how do we get that customer from point A to point B? And we'll be doing that with the coffee app and, and how we get them through all hurdles of this process. Uh, all the way to getting items to the cart and then signing up and placing their order. And then, of course, we have something like a style guide, which you'll see in most case studies that we're all excited about. Uh, and then the big pretty pictures of the visuals, which is like, OK, you can catch someone on the strategy and then you can deliver something like this to really reel them in and continue the conversation uh, in terms of why they should hire you as a designer. Or maybe they're trying to see if your design palette or your design decisions matches what they're interested in. Um, so we could look at more work, but I think the most interesting part right here is if we get started in XD and start talking about process. What do y'all think? Yeah. Yeah, let's get into it. And you guys should follow so, Cody on Behance because he's got tons of case studies and you are one of few people who I've heard actually like them. So I'm sure <laughs> it looks like you do a great job. So it's a great reference for people to check out, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's like you get into these interviews with people, especially with startups. And like, I feel like a lot of the times we are selling ourselves. We have to say, look, they may be talking to maybe 20 or 30 designers. And unless you can really articulate the process, then they're kind of taking a gamble. Like they're kind of trying mm -hmm. to figure out, oh, are you the right designer for me? So uh, we talk about, oh, should we put a lot of emphasis on our portfolios or how much time should we spend on that? But the way that I see it is that if you have a really solid portfolio, then you don't have to spend time going out and finding job after job. They'll kind of just come and mm -hmm. find you. Uh, you guys, this is my cat Humphrey. <laughs> yeah. uh, Sometimes, He's getting closer and closer. Uh, yeah, sometimes he'll come and say, hey, uh, so if he drops by, that is him. So getting started today, y'all, we're going to create a coffee app for a new coffee shop in town. We're going to make it up. Um, there could be a new coffee shop in town, but we can go ahead. We're going to do it's going to be the fastest delivery with the highest amount of caffeine. So it's going to for sure pack a punch. Uh, we're going to dive into some user research methods, create some user flows, wireframes all on day one. Uh, and then for day two, we can jump into some of the more high fidelity aspects of seeing that product get into either the app store or maybe just go live. Uh, so some of the things that we'll touch on here is a competitive analysis, an affinity diagram, conversion funnels, and then user flows and wireframes. All right. So I'm going to close out XD. I'm going to close this and I'm going to move us over to the nitty gritty part of it. So I did a little prep work before this little session and interviewed not only a couple friends, but I went and read some blogs about like what makes a coffee app better or worse in some people's mind. And this is where you can kind of get into that affinity diagram and affinity mapping and it, we can call it group thinking exercises. So to start, I like to look at this double diamond model. And the idea here is that there's gonna be constant states in the research method, which will, this will be our research here. And then in our design area, which will be right here. And in research, I wanna make sure you guys know it's okay to diverge. Like the whole point in starting off really early is to try and collect and synthesize as many ideas as possible, no matter where that comes from. It could come from a user interview that you have, or maybe it comes from some blogs that you read while you're designing. But 
the idea here is just collect, collect, collect as much data as possible. So let's go. I was playing with some Adobe plugins recently, and I saw that they had a affinity diagram plugin. So if you guys are in XD right now, check out this diagram. It opens up uh, and it'll go ahead and kind of get you started. We can zoom into this little post-it right here. And it says, it kind of tells you what's this for and how to use it. So if you're not familiar with affinity diagrams or maybe you don't know which research method to start with, XD really does help educate you on how to start and where to start. So definitely use this as a tool in you guys' toolbox. But what I'll start with, oh, here's the other thing, y'all, we live in COVID time. So like everyone's working from home, everyone's doing this remotely now. So normally, Elisa, you could probably relate to these sessions where you have 10 people, designers, CEOs, marketing, sales in a room, and you're getting everyone excited, writing things down, putting it on sticky note and slapping it onto the wall. And everyone's interacting with those things. But now we, we've come to this remote world of where we still want to be collaborative and we want to work together, but we have to be a bit more creative with how we do it. Um, so that's what I use these affinity diagrams in XD for. So I'm going to move this double diamond artboard right here uh, and bring this in. Y'all, in case you're wondering, my coffee was delivered. I hope you guys have your coffee and your Red Bull nearby. <laughs> and you're just drinking it up. Uh, so let's look at the first one. I like to see how much caffeine each coffee contains to gauge my caffeine intake. So this would be an example of something that maybe you read in a, like maybe you did a usability study or maybe you interviewed someone and they said, hey, this is what I'm interested in. This is what matters to me. So I'll go ahead and document that one right there. And then we'll move on to the next one. And what I'm doing right here is really just capturing all the things that people have mentioned so that we can get a more holistic view of what maybe some pain points or, um, or, or what we need to include in the app. So let me. And I'm just, that. we're getting some questions here about the plugin. Um, so what is the exact plugin called here? It's whiteboard. So if you go to Adobe right here and hit the plus, um, there's so many plugins that you can use and you type in whiteboard. You guys will see it right here. And they have a bunch of other um, little templates that you can use in there. So whiteboard, check it out. Nice. And, and if you guys are using some while we're doing this live, drop them in there and let me know how you like them. Uh, I've only played with a couple of them, but there are a bunch. Y'all toppings, this is a big one. I like to see what kind of toppings are on. Uh, yeah, I wanna know whipped cream. Let's do it, cinnamon. I want some toppings. Okay. Zooming out, adjust milk and dairy alternatives. So that's another one. So I can just reading a couple of these right now, I'm kind of getting a feel for, there's a lot of modifications that people want to the specific items. So we're not even talking like, product architecture yet. We aren't talking anything visual. We're just getting an idea of how someone naturally wants to order food um, or order coffee in this case. So I like to see the price of the coffee at each size to decide what's the best price for my budget. Yeah, that one's important for sure. Um, come Monday, I might buy a $9 coffee, but Friday, uh-uh. I'm going down for the $4 ones. I need to know that for sure. And we're getting a question here about where you're getting these insights from. Raphael wants to know, did you get these user stories from any interviews? Yes. Yeah, so I, what I'll normally do is I'll conduct uh, interviews by sending invites on blogs. So let's say you're, you're on a Medium article um, and you're reading about any topic that you want. So in this example, what I did was went read a bunch of case studies about how other people have done research on coffee apps. And I pretty much digested all of that content from those Medium articles. And then I said, okay, this is a really good start. So you'll see some of this content here that came directly from those Medium articles. But then on the side of that, I reached out to friends. I reached out to family. I reached out to people, friends of friends who I knew ordered coffee on a daily basis. But if you wanna take it even a step further, 
I'd also recommend like going to your local coffee shop and watching people interact with each other. And that could be anything, not just with coffee, but like trying to capture as much of the humanistic aspect of that communication between the barista or, and the person ordering the coffee is just going to bring more and more natural language to the app and the, the language that you're using in the product in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. You're kind of using a combination of different tactics to get these insights. And it kind of looks like fast and quick ways to, to learn as much as you can. Sounds yeah, like I, right. I definitely don't think it's like a one size fits all. Um, and like, even whenever I was reading over these just before we got onto the stream, like I was reading things that were very specific to ordering uh, their coffee. But y'all, sometimes I, I got something like this from a friend that said, uh, can coffee apps just be easier to order coffee? Like that one, that one just goes to show how frustrated people can be whenever you're downloading a new app. You're downloading the app, they're asking for location, they're asking for what? Uh, your location, your notifications, permissions for your camera, your contacts, like 101 things. Things like that just really reground you to understanding that people don't care about all the technicalities. They just want to get into the app and order, order a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. So... I'm gonna copy and paste a couple more of these in here um, to kind of get an idea of the variety of things. So now we have photos. Uh, I like to see a photo of coffee available so I can set my expectation. So just looking at the six that we have right here, I can start building categories of content. So in this little uh, template that XD comes with, like the next step they say is brainstorm ideas which is what you would do in either a group think session. You could have uh, maybe some focus groups, some content that you've done previously, or maybe you have the CEO of a company with you. Maybe you have other employees at the company that's in the same room, but this is more of a collaborative exercise to do with people. So at least if someone brings up anything in the chat like that they wanna see is put in this app, drop it in here and well, let us know and I'll drop it in the, uh, <laughs> in the posted right here with us. Hey, we can get and, some user insights from the chat. <laughs> yeah, and we'll, we'll make sure that we include it. Ooh, what are you drinking, by the way, Cody? What is your delivery? So I just ordered from a local coffee shop called Jet, uh, and I got a quad shot caramel cold brew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you ready to party at that quad shot. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't do anything less than a quad shot. So y'all get ready. We're here. We're here for it. We're here to win. Uh, the coffee app <sighs> makes sense now. <laughs> yeah, the coffee app makes total sense. So, so step one, again, we we're in this brainstorm ideas and we're moving to step two, which is now we want to start theming. So without boring you guys with all the 20 different ones that we have in here, I'm going to move my uh, headset real quick. Uh, I'm going to start trying to cluster it because I can already see like this is this needs to be an item page. So I'm going to call theme a item page. And really, we're doing a coffee app so we can already assume we can just say like coffee page. Uh, and the first thing that comes to mind right here, coffee page is I'm thinking, OK, I can see a photo. I can see that people are asking for uh, how much caffeine is in. So I'm going to delete these notes right here how much caffeine is in the coffee to gauge caffeine intake. If you guys do care about your caffeine intake, we're gonna take that into consideration. We're gonna put all the amount of milligrams of caffeine in our coffees in this app. So y'all don't worry. Um, adjusting the size. So we'd wanna be able to adjust the size on the coffee page. I'm gonna go ahead and call this coffee item page actually. And let's center this because if not, I know we got some OCD people with us watching. <laughs> uh, add topping. So that is definitely going to go into the item page. Let's move that here. Um, milk and uh, dairy alternatives. Yeah, we don't want to ruin anyone's day by not letting them choose that. So I will put that there and we'll delete this. What are some other ones? I like to see the price. Well, price definitely should probably go under item, but here's where it gets interesting because you'd probably want to show the price of the coffee like on a homepage or somewhere else within the app. 
So when I start seeing some overlap like that, what I'll do is I'll take this post-it and then like make a new section of what it kind of starts forming it up to be. And I don't know what this page will be called, but I just know that we'll have to have a way for someone to see this content on a home page. So I'll start with that. I'll say home, but maybe we call it something else whenever we get down to it. I'm gonna delete these things right here to give us some room. Save. And we also have um, a couple people who've added some stuff that they would like to see here. Yeah, uh, let's do right. it. <laughs> so um, Alexandra's asks, I want to know calories and how quickly it will be delivered. Calorie. Okay, so let's do um, how many calories in my coffee. Delivery was a big one too. I think that one came up multiple times when I had conducted a couple of surveys which was like, when will it arrive? Which here's another interesting too, is that when will it arrive can be perceived differently versus like how long it'll take. Because depending on the time that it'll take to arrive, you may decide that it might be faster for you to go pick it up yourself. So then you start getting into a couple of interesting questions is that we have a, um, how long will it take to arrive before placing the order? That might be one. And then I think what Alexander was also mentioning is that after you placed it, you want to know when it's going to like, how long is it going to take you to actually get to your doorstep? So mm. maybe that's like a order tracking type thing. Um, after placing my order, when will it get here? Yeah, that's a good one. And we also can, have, Sorry, go go ahead. <laughs> we oh, also have some, but, now more people got excited and wanted to add more. <laughs> yeah, let's add, let's add, let's do it. <laughs> um, Josh brought up a really cool one or a really interesting one, which is I think around safety. He's like, I want to know when the delivery person brings it that they didn't add any ingredients themselves, safety protocols. Ooh. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. And I feel like with food delivery in general now, like I remember getting something, I had recently traveled over to, to Bozeman actually to go for a land trust event. And Josh, it's probably Josh Hinton. So shout out to Josh. Josh and I spent uh, the night at an Airbnb while we were out in a company retreat and we had ordered food. And that was a big thing was how can you be sure that like the food is secure besides putting a piece of tape on it? But it's kind of up to the restaurant or it's kind of up to the, the, the coffee delivery place at that point for us to do this. But what we can say uh, is maybe we can put a note for the consumer because then there's perception. Because if the customer is thinking, oh, will my coffee get to me safely? Then they have the question in their mind. And as designers, what we want to do is kind of predict some of those concerns. So we can say, mm. uh, will my coffee be sanitary? Sanitary, yes. Um, and maybe we don't solve that in the product. Like maybe that takes, you have to, to connect with the actual barista and the coffee shop place to say, hey, we need you to put these stickers on, on the coffee cup. My coffee cup did not come with a sticker, y'all. It was wide open. I am trusting. <laughs> <laughs> I am trusting that it is good. But here's an example of where like maybe some micro copy comes into place. Like maybe there's a section on the uh, coffee item that says all deliveries um, have a safety seal on them. Or maybe there's like a little picture, an icon of a safety seal. And we mentioned sanitation in the restaurant, especially now. Uh, so many, so many people who are doing delivery and coffee and food and really anything these days. It's sanitary is a big part of that. So let's put... Will my coffee be sanitary? Maybe that's a coffee item page uh, that we can we can solve that for. And then after placing my order, when will it get here? That's definitely gonna be like post, post order. So let's make a new section right here. And we're gonna call this like order status slash tracking. Okay. If y'all have better titles for this too, y'all let me know. We can come up with some with some magic here. Uh, and let's keep as if you guys want to drop some more, uh, Alizia and I will just keep on moving things around and, and getting them classified. So calories, I'm going to put that in item, definitely item. 
how long will it take to arrive? That could be item. It could be home as well. Like maybe there's really fast times, like in the morning, where、um, there's more staff or there's multiple baristas, and they can get your coffee in 20 minutes. Versus in the afternoon, maybe the staff is a little bit lower.、Uh, it might take a little longer for you.、Um, really setting those expectations up for the customers would really help give everyone a more solid experience there. Photos, I like to see photos. I think we had photos in here somewhere, but let's drop that one in there again here. Photos.、Um, and what are some other ones? Call my driver. Oh, that is a big one, huh? Although I feel like once I place an order for food or drinks, I I feel like I get busy and then I never remember. And then it shows up and it's like surprise. Oops, let me paste it. And、here. as you're creating these、um, categories and placing them in, what are you thinking, or how are you? How is your mind grouping them as you're going through? Yeah, I'm thinking in terms of like. A product navigation, and that's actually a good point. Like we should touch on some of that stuff right now because I feel like when we approach a product in general, it's very overwhelming to start on a blank canvas. Like just getting on this live stream, thinking about where we can start is kind of like, oh wow, we don't have anything to start off with. But what I find that helps me a lot is what I call like the conversion inverted pyramid here. And what this helps me visualize is I have to get that customer. I think about that journey. I have to get them from launching the product for the first time in order to getting what they want out of it. They don't care about all the shiny gadgets and gizmos and features that we can provide. So what I'm thinking about is how I can get them through that funnel.、Uh, and, and most like food delivery or even with land trust, whenever we're doing like booking platforms, Airbnb is really big on this. Is that They'll take their homepage and say, "We want to get customers from the homepage to either a categories page or a search results page." And what that means is that you can start figuring out from 100% of people who land on this homepage. Let's say that like 80% of people make it to a categories or a search results page, and then those 80% of people. Make it to an item page or a listings page, whatever it is that they're trying to get out of the product. Let's say that's like fifty, which hey, still pretty good. And then once you get them to an item page or something that they're interested in, they need to buy the service, pay pay for the product, whatever it is that they need at the end of it. And then there's always a conversion funnel that looks something like this. It's usually a hundred percent here, not money, a hundred percent there. A percent here, a percent here, here, and as designers, I, I kind of like push myself to say, how can I keep these numbers as high as possible throughout the funnel? Of course, that's not going to happen in the real world because we can't design for every edge case, and maybe the customer who found the product isn't interested in it as much as they thought they were. Like maybe it was just、uh, a wrong ad that hit the wrong customer, and then they bounce, and that's okay too. But the idea here is that we really dial into How do we keep that customer progressively moving forward to the end goal? The more distractions we put on their plate,、uh, the more journeys we try and take them throughout the product, the more distracted they get. And at the end of the day, we're just adding more friction for them. So I kind of keep the mindset back to that question, as in, if I'm going to build a product to get from someone from A to Z, this is the approach that I usually have whenever I'm going into that. And you, we can kind of see that here、um, whenever we're grouping these items. So, like this coffee item page, if we went back to our inverted pyramid here, that would fall like right under. This could be item. This could be a listing. This could be like if we were buying lamps, it could be anything.、Uh, but the idea is that we have a page that's just specifically to what the customer is interested in buying.、Um, and then homepage we have here, and you can see like order status and tracking. That doesn't really follow. Our inverted pyramid, but there's always going to be some caveats that come underneath it. Like checkout is going to be the end of that journey, of that portion of the journey. But then there's a whole another section of the journey that we can capture, and it's super. It can be a lot to try and figure this all out all at once. So definitely don't want to say, "Hey, 
you got to have it all on day one, because that is definitely <laughs> not the case. <laughs> like that's the fastest way probably to a headache. Uh, but I think yeah. that just keeping it in mind, it, it really helps to stay focused. Yeah. Thanks for explaining that. Um, so we actually have some more things we want that some other people have suggested as well that we can add. Yeah. Let's put um, them. We've got Mia who wants to know about delivery price. Delivery price. Okay. So what is the cost for delivery? And then okay. we have Pearl who is saying this might be a little extra, but I love seeing how the beverage is constructed. <laughs> oh, so like how the barista is actually making it. Yeah, I think ah, so. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, I wonder if that's what she means. So, so this is interesting because now I was thinking we would just have photos, but like how cool would it be if you get buy-in? So if I'm working with a, with a company and I brought this to the, the coffee, uh, lab and said, Hey, there's some customers who really are interested how and how this coffee is made. Then we could put together a whole like video series. And let's say you want a caramel cold brew. Uh, <laughs> and maybe we set up a bunch of cameras with the barista and then we create that in the app. So let's just put it as an option. Um, customer wants to see how the coffee is made. Yo, that's actually one of my favorite parts of going to like my local coffee shop is that seeing the amount of craft and care that goes into those baristas, like they just care so much. They, they always have like such incredible decorations whenever they're doing it, when they're pouring it. I'm like, I would have to practice this for years before I could come close to doing this. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you see like they drew a cat or something with the foam. Yes. Like, uh, how did yes. you do it? <laughs> yeah, and they do it so seamlessly. Like their hands are always so smooth whenever they're doing it. Uh, and then we also have another one from Peter um, suggesting a coffee, del uh, a Q&A, like thinking that there could be a Q&A section. Like maybe a whole community aspect of the app. Mm -hmm. So let's do... Um, community this could probably be its own page too like that could be some re-engagement maybe you wake up in the morning and you're interested in not just the coffee delivery but maybe you want to talk with like other coffee enthusiasts like i would talk about coffee for hours with people if that was the case <laughs> i mean aren't you kind of right now <laughs> <laughs> Elisa, you're so right you see i don't i don't even yeah we'll be talking about coffee for two days you're right so this is gonna work so I actually think that something like this is such a big feature that I'm going to put it in its own like section. And we're going to call this a social coffee community. Uh, and then let's get some, some, if you guys want to drop some things in the, in the chat while we're, we're putting some other things in here, let's come up with some things that may help build this out. Uh, and that's a big portion of this is like, really figuring out having the idea and then throwing more content to it so that we can really figure out how it's going to be incorporated into the app. This but, one is kind of related, but not quite sure if it goes in the same category, but Juan recommends a gift option um, and also being able to write notes for the, for your gift. Oh, so like gift cards or maybe um, I think gifting a coffee, like and writing a note on the cup of coffee for that person. Gifting. Ooh, so yeah, I have some friends that sometimes if they're having a bad day, I just want to send them a coffee. So it'd be interesting. Let's say we could probably do that by adding some type of special instructions on the item. Like that might be an easy solve there. So we could say um, add special instructions on coffee item. And that way, if I want to send a coffee to Juan, I can say, I can open the app. I could purchase the coffee, get his delivery address, but then in the special instructions, maybe to tell the barista, hey, maybe Juan was having a rough day today. Maybe put a little extra, a little extra love in the bag or maybe a little extra shot of espresso in there. <laughs> <laughs> Or Having a bad or, day, four yeah. shots to five shots of espresso. Four shots or five shots, that would be incredible. That would make my day better. 
hundred percent. All right. So Juan, we're going to put add special instructions on coffee item right there for him. Cause I definitely. And then, and then I'll just add one last one from Kayla, who's asking about some sort of reward system to apply to future orders. Yeah, I think rewards is a big one too in itself. That had come up with some interviews that I had done as well. Um, reward points for purchases. All the coffee shops are doing it. Kayla, you're spot on with it. I'm going to go ahead and copy this one. Um, and let's do a new section here too. Let's do like rewards. Rewards and gamification, I feel like is such a required part of coffee experiences. Like how many coffee shops do we know that don't have a rewards program? Probably not many. I know sometimes when I'm driving, I'm thinking about trying a new coffee shop and then I'm like, but I'm two coffees away from a free one. I'm just going to go back to the other, <laughs> to, the, uh, to the other coffee shop. So rewards. So let's put that one right there. Um, I, I want reward points for my purchases. So we could have like a whole screen that's just dedicated to, and let's do like tracking visits. That's a big one. B I S I T S. Why are designers infamously bad for spelling too? Y'all, good, good thing for, <laughs> for Adobe XD. There's so many times where I feel like before I was using XD, I my spell check was not turned on and I would send things to clients to review and they're like, what's this? And I'm like, oh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so good thing for spell check. Uh, so I'm going to move some of these other things while we finalize our affinity map here. Um, cost for delivery, that could probably be item page. Um, and let me make our board a little larger. Also, for anyone who's just joining, Cody is working on, as you can probably tell, a coffee app, and he is working on this affinity map. He's taking user insights and also gathering more insights from the chat and starting to categorize them to build out the structure for his app. We actually have a great question from Raphael about this. He said, I notice you're choosing certain insights from the list. How do you decide which ones to choose? And what do you do with the rest of the insights you didn't choose? Um, yeah. So how, how do you prioritize that? Great point. So normally what I would do is do all of these. Um, like I'm kind of picking and choosing here as I go, uh, just for, for speed, uh, with you guys. But like, if I was doing this with a live session with a team of 10, 20 people, um, group thinking like UX exercises like this, like I'm not opposed to them going two hours just to really nail down that divergence phase of the design process. So if we go back to our pyramid right here. Like we aren't really trying to nail down or prioritize anything at this point. It's really just trying to digest and, and start categorizing. So when I'm in this little list of user stories or kind of feedback that I'm gathering, I'm kind of just refreshing my memory of what they are and, and what other people are thinking of. But if there are specific ones that you guys see uh, that we haven't classified that definitely need to go in there, just let us know. And I will drop them in there for sure. Um, but yeah, really gather as much as possible. There's never too much uh, in my book. Some people would probably argue that, but. <laughs> 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 but like, look at this one. This was a really interesting one here. Push notifications at the normal time that I purchase my coffee. Asking me if I'm ready to order my coffee would be great based off my order history. So like what's really interesting here is that we start getting into be, like user behavior patterns. And, you know, some people would say, I don't want push notifications and I don't want to be bothered. Um, and, and it's that's a true statement. Like that's a fair statement. So it's interesting to try and design around um, the needs of someone who says, yeah, I want to be able to just tap a button. And if I've ordered it already, then let me just place it and have it delivered to my door while other people may feel a little like strange about push notifications and feeling like we're trying to upsell the customer or push them into purchasing when they're not ready. And all of those things you'll have to kind of sniff out and figure out whenever you're testing the actual prototype with the customer. Uh, but I'm gonna grab a little push notification one here and drop this in our affinity diagram just so that we can keep it on our radar. 
A big one here too, shout out to the developers. Y'all, designers, we come up with some crazy stuff all the time. Like we we have no, no filter or no means to an end, but after exercises like this, it can be really useful to just kind of go to the development team, uh, especially with startups. Like you, the last thing you want to do is come up with this huge elaborate plan that you and the CEO worked on in this little like tight vacuum. And then you go and build out this beautiful mock-up, you go and get it tested with customers and everything's lining up the way you would expect. And then your developers look at it and they say, we can't do any of this stuff given the infrastructure. We have to rework all of this stuff out. Like all of that is really good ammunition that's gonna help you be just better prepared whenever you're working on these designs. Um, so definitely keep that in mind too whenever you're working on like groupthink exercises as well. Um, yeah, Alexandra's asking like, what do you do with those contradictions? With the, with the engineers or just with like uh, the product in general? I think like with the, you're talking about the push notifications there and like some yeah. of them. Yeah, when people have contradicting things that they say they want. Yeah, yeah. so this is a good one. And this goes back to really having those relationships with your engineers and your dev team is because from a technical standpoint, you could enable push notifications depending on what the user's interested in. So we kind of look at push notifications as like a black and white box. It either is or it isn't. But in reality, you really can dial into which push notifications you deliver to the customer. So maybe that they're interested in promotions or maybe they're interested in just tracking of their order. So what I like to do is really understand and talk to those customers to say, hey, how can we deliver notifications that are useful to you? And then based off of what they tell me, I will kind of design like a little settings or a profile section that'll allow them to maybe enable or disable promotions or tracking. So instead of seeing it as a one size fits all, you can really start designing systems that work tailored to each individual customer. And then you don't have them turning their push notifications off because they're annoyed with all the promos and they're still getting their delivery tracking updates because that's what they want at the end of the day. And it can work both ways. Maybe, you know, some customers are super busy and they're not interested in um, order tracking information. So they want to turn it all off uh, or maybe they just want promos. But I think at the end of the day, if you're interviewing those customers and you're hearing that they want the push notifications for tracking and not marketing, maybe you can work with the engineering team and make that happen. 100%. So like push notifications, I would put this in like, y'all, you know, I call this like my utility drawer, AKA the profile or settings. <laughs> uh, but we'll put that here. So push notifications. Yeah. So do we have any last ones before we kind of start looking at what we have here and moving things around? and getting us into like the user flow and wire framing? Um, I think we're, I think I've covered most of them. There might be a few that were stressed, <laughs> that were uh, behind, but that's okay. Right. I think we can move forward. <laughs> Cause Perfect. there's also a lot of like, there's a lot of uh, action happening in the chat. A lot of back and forth, which is really cool. A lot of questions. So it's fun. Oh, good, good. All right, Super so y'all, the next step right here is like the really sometimes confrontational but also the really collaborative part. So at the end of the day, everyone who's in these thinking exercises wants what's best for the customer and for the business. Uh, and if that's not the case, it's kind of our jobs to keep everyone aligned. We wanna make sure that everyone who's in this room is committed to both the business and the customer so that we have everyone's interest in mind. So we get to this voting phase and I love that XD like puts little little stickers here for you because normally you would do this on a huge like 10 foot wall with a bunch of themes. And the idea now, um, I think going back to, we were talking about prioritizing, diverging and converging is we wanna go back to our double diamond and we're still in the research phase right here. But now what we're trying to do is really dial into like what features should we start working on developing? Like how can we really bring uh, the most lightweight MVP version of this product to market, or at least to a prototype to start testing. So what we can do is we'll delete, let's remove these things. Um, 
and our little, we can delete our little dots. So since we'll be doing this a little bit more collaboratively, but now we want to start taking our sections or our categories and saying, how does it make sense to move forward in like a user flow or a user journey? So we definitely have home. So I'm going to take home and kind of put this first. And then from home, we're going to say, okay, where do we want them to go from this section? Uh, well, we have in our sections here, we have a coffee item page. So that seems like the most natural next place to go. So I'll take this and put our item page right here. And then we have these little areas like tracking, profile, community, rewards. And if we went back to our diamond, like they don't really fall into any of these sections, but we know that they're interesting. Like we know that people are interested in including these features in their app. So I'll normally keep those around. Let me actually move these, let's move next step. And you can see with XD, we can kind of keep this stuff super flexible. Normally we'd all be just scrambling on the wall and put this uh, <laughs> for everyone to see together. But now that we have technology, let's move this out. Okay. So naturally I'm gonna move this vote. We're gonna take home, put this here. We're gonna go from home to like a, we have our item page. And then from our item page, we're gonna say, okay, where do we wanna go to next? Item page will probably go back home. And this will make more sense, I think, once we look at it all together. Then we have our order review. And then from order review, we'll have checkout. So what the reason why I line this out like this is because it can be kind of intimidating to figure out which direction we want those customers to go. So again, we're trying to keep everyone in the room aligned. We want to make sure that we're taking a customer from home all the way to checkout. So we take the features that we have right here. I like to see the price of the coffee. How long will it take? I like to see trending or seasonal coffee to try out new flavors. And then I will lower this stuff down and say, these are some of the things that we want to include on the home screen. Um, so to do that, we'll break, I'll put like a little text layer right here. Or actually, let's just move, let's do this. Home, boom. Okay. Yeah, another big important part that I didn't put in here was search. That one came up so many times. Like, how do I search? Um, I want to search for a specific coffee. Boom. Everyone good? All right. So I think people are good. <laughs> it's quiet now, so I think people are just paying attention. <laughs> suddenly yeah <laughs> now we're getting to the to the nitty-gritty part of it all mm -hmm. so what i'll do is take home and this is kind of like really building out that really rough wireframe uh we're not putting boxes yet we're kind of just thinking about what are the components that need to go on this page based off of the features and things that came up in discussion so i know that we want to have a search uh so i'm going to put search right there some things that came up was like seasonal coffee. So we'll put seasonal coffee right there. Um, maybe popular. That could be like, oh, let's do like trending today. That always gets me. Sometimes I want to try a new coffee and I roll up into the drive through and I'm like, what's trending? Trending coffee. Uh, popular. Humphrey, are you trying to type as well? popular coffee, and then well, it's probably enough for us to do on our homepage right here. Okay. And then we'll look at the item page. So what I did right here was take these things. How long will it take? Ooh, let's put that. We definitely need that in there. How long will it take for coffee to arrive? All right. 
and then coffee prices. So we'll have the coffee prices and stuff on each individual item. Trending and seasonal, check, check. That's all good. Search, check, good. All right, so let's look at the item page now. So I'll take this stuff and move it down. Grab this. And then similar. That stuff over. Bring down our item page. Ooh, let's center that too. I don't know if it was bothering y'all as much as it was bothering me. Copy, paste. Okay, so let's look at the item. We wanna say caffeine content. We wanna do sizing, sizing for coffee. We wanna do price of the coffee. And what I'm doing right here is going through all these pages, like all the things that came up in the group think exercise and putting it in just like a vertical format so we can see it as an item. Like if we were picturing this inside of a product. So I'm going to keep on moving toppings. So let's do modify toppings, two peas. Um, Adjust milk, so that's going to be our like dairy alternatives. Save coffee. And sometimes all of these things won't make it. You know, like sometimes if you get into that voting exercise where you have it all there and everyone's grabbing their post-it notes and their stickers and they're putting things on different post-it notes, maybe some of these things don't make it to this first version of the MVP and that's okay. But the idea is that you just have it, you've recorded it, and then you can come back uh, to it later because maybe after we make this first mock-up and we test it with some customers and the customer may say, hey, this is a really cool app, but I feel like it's missing this. Well, that's great because we recorded it and now we can go back and add it in and then you can use that as some ammunition to whoever you need to make that case for to get that feature into the app. Uh, so I'm gonna try and include as much as we can because we don't have a voting council today. It's just us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. Cause like you're talking about how, how do we prioritize these? Or that was a question that was asked earlier. And so yeah. we don't have the, the full team to do that with. So you're kind yeah. of, it's all, it's all in the same category yeah. right now. It's all same priority. Yeah. And that's, and sometimes that makes those decisions easier. You know, whenever all those decisions come back to the designer, it can be, you may feel like, am I making the right decision? And it can be overwhelming, but if you make the decision and you test it, that's okay. You tested one version of it and you can always make tweaks to it. Um, calories, let me go ahead and add the calories in there. Cause I know that one came from our live, our audience. How many calories? Um Cody, Raphael's asking, do you have a list of the questions that you asked during your user interviews? Yes. So I could probably share that list because it's all, well, there's like a default thing that I would normally approach with customers. And it's usually like, tell me how you currently do this. <laughs> so let me see if I can phrase that. So whenever I'm meeting with customers, I kind of get into like this interview mode of trying to figure out what they want and how the product can solve their problem. But a lot of the times they don't usually know and you can figure that stuff out in like a conversation that you're having with them. So I use the, I use the analogy of we're filming a Netflix movie and I want to hear the day in the life from when you wake up to when you go to sleep and everything in between of what your day looks like. And sometimes that's awkward. Like sometimes a customer will be like, Cody, why are you asking me my day in the life? But what really starts showing itself is that instead of approaching a customer with like a bullet point list of direct questions that they may just give you a yes or a no, it kind of spins that conversation and gives you the opportunity to learn what is the day in the life of Elise look like? What is the day in the life of Cody look like? And then as you're having that conversation with the customer, you can start thinking about how you can make their jobs or their life easier, depending on the product that you're trying to build to help solve uh, that problem. So 
I usually start with some basic conversation uh, with them on like who they are, how are they doing, and then get into you wake up and then how do you start your day? <laughs> <laughs> like, where do you go? What do you do? What are some of the, the issues that you have in your life? And usually that starts fielding questions that may have gone unnoticed or you wouldn't have thought about before. So maybe it's not so much a template based question or interview type style, but it's just more of an interview method. And a lot of people frame it as like the jobs to be done. I'm sure you guys have heard that many times in the industry, which is like, you're not trying to design a product for someone, but you're trying to design a product for someone to hire you to do their job. Uh, and there's there's so much content. Aliza, you probably talk about that stuff as well uh, with customers and just other designers, but it's kind of its own methodology and in interviewing and doing contextual inquiries with, with customers. Yeah, it's great to understand how people do certain things or explain, when you get them to explain more of what their morning looks like or coffee purchasing or get into specific experiences you get a lot of details and that's that's always great to learn from so yeah yeah I, I think it's like embracing the uncomfortableness like it's so easy to want to be their best friend I remember when I started interviewing people I would just like try so hard to make them like me and and want to be best friends with them and then mm -hmm. I would end the session and then I'd go back to the team and they're like what did we learn? Like, what do we need to build? And I'm like, I just made a new friend. I don't know what we're going to build, but <laughs> I just made a new friend. And I think that oh. part can sometimes be difficult to get over that hurdle, but y'all just embrace the uncomfortableness and, and really ask them uh, the questions that may completely seem off tangent, but may just like start triggering a train of thought for them uh, in terms of like what would make their life easier and how you can deliver that ease with the product. Mm -hmm. So I kind of dropped some things here in our item page. Uh, we have our caffeine content, sizing, price, modify, dairy alternative, save, will it be sanitary? That's going to be a little shout out there. How many calories, add special instructions. And another big thing that I'm thinking about right here is how we're going to get them from page to page. So, and I usually call these lists like our affordances or our signifiers. And what that means is that what does the customer have to click on in order to get them or interact with in order to get them from point A to point B? And this one seems obvious. It's going to be like add to cart. Um, and then like that add to cart will then take them to the next phase of whatever that looks like, uh, wherever they are. So the reason I put home next here is you guys are probably wondering, well, you were on home and then you went to an item page and then you're back home. How does that make sense? Or why would you do that? And the way that I think about this navigation is, again, a progressive forward momentum. So we're on home. And like, I'm going to draw some little boxes here because this is how I animate it in my head. Um, I'm going to hit the little rectangle. So if this is our home right here, I think, OK, there's some things right here. They tapped on something. And then what happens? So let's do home. I'm having like, this is that little item right here. So when here, I tapped and then bam, that item just popped up right here. I interacted with that item. And then after I hit add to cart, let's just say that add to cart button's going to be below there. This item kind of goes away. And now you're back at the home, except you have an item in your cart. So I visualize it in a way that this is my home base. And then every page that follows kind of keeps that forward progression. But whenever you're trying to explain that to someone or show it in a very visual way, they'll kind of look at you like, Cody, what did you just do with those boxes right there? Uh, so <laughs> instead of doing it that way, I just go ahead and frame it like this, um, which kind of shows home item page. And then we're going to be back home right here. So on our home page now, we've added the item to cart. So now we need a way to get to the cart. So the only thing that's going to change now on the home page is that we have an item. So I'm going to put like items in cart, and this is going to be a CTA, uh, which is going to be our call to action in order to get them to that next step. And maybe they want to order multiple coffees, or maybe they just want one. Um, that's going to be a bunch of edge cases where we'll be able to figure out, but 
whenever you're first starting your wireframe, or at least whenever I start my wireframe, I do it as basic and as like simplistic as possible to get me through that flow. So items in cart, I'm gonna click on that CTA and then I'm gonna get to my order review. So let's center this stuff right here, move that over, boom. And here's our order review. And then I don't know if we had a section for order review in our um, little page here. We have rewards, we have our community, we have our profile, we have home. But of course, no checkout is going to be complete without an order review and the checkout page. So these two kind of go hand in hand. So let's just combine, like instead of doing a checkout on itself, let's just do order review slash checkout. Let's do it all in one. Check out. Nothing wrong with that. I'm going to center that here. And then we kind of think about those basic things that we would want to put in the checkout based off of some of the things that we mentioned here, which is we definitely want uh, how long it'll take to arrive. Like we have that under home, but that would definitely be helpful to know um, in our checkout. I want to search, no, 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 profile settings, no, order status. So like this whole section here, we'll probably wanna move um, and put that part of our funnel over here. But order review, we need to know what items are in our cart. In cart. And maybe we do like item one, yeah. Um, maybe we want to change the quantity. Want it quantity? Okay. Um, things on order review like delivery address that came up in some conversations that I had. If I want to get delivery, or maybe look, we need to do delivery or pickup. Maybe we show the time. Um, how long will it take? So let's do delivery um, time delivery time, okay? And I'm gonna actually put that above. Yeah. And y'all, what I'm doing right here as I move things around is I'm thinking like hierarchy on a page, what could be most important based off the content and the information that we gathered? So I'm thinking delivery time came up, so I definitely wanna include that one. Delivery or pickup, that came up, so we wanna make sure that we have a little option to say, okay, Maybe if the delivery time is too long, then I want to toggle that over to pick up and give me the option to pick that up. Uh, and then we have like the actual item. So we have item one, change the quantity. We probably want to show price for that item. Let's do price, caffeine. And I think someone mentioned calories too. So let's do um, calories. And then no order review would be the same without a pricing breakdown, which is like, okay, I got to pick a credit card. Uh, let's see, we'll have like subtotal, total, and payment method. Perfect. So you can see now I'm trying to break up specific portions of this page. Um, reflecting on some of the things that we've done. So going back to our affinity diagram, uh, usually you guys would spend like days just synthesizing and working on this stuff and you would know it down to a T uh, in terms of like what features actually need to be included. But for this, what I'm doing is kind of just skimming over things that came up in the live chat and things that I remember when talking to customers before uh, doing this stream so that I can start building out what we'd want to include on each of these pages. So we I also got a... a few suggestions too for the order review. Um, Miha says estimated delivery time and Perfect. Helen says promo code entry. Oh, promo, yes. Y'all promo code is a tricky one too. How, like I think back of how many times I'm so close to checking out on a website and I see a little like insert your promo code. And then I go like scour the internet trying to find a promo code. 
And then I don't find one. And then sometimes I don't make my way back to the app. And then the vice versa of that is how many times a customer places an order, they had a promo code, and then they don't see a place to put the promo code. So I think I have found like a happy medium where I'll do a live text where it says uh, promo code. And then in order for them to see the input fields for the promo code, I'll have like a manual tap. And what that will do is not have the promo code take like center stage, but at least if they see it, they can say, oh yeah, I have a promo code. They can tap it and then they can interact with it. So there's always that fine line of playing with promo codes of how much you want to promote it to potentially lose a customer versus how much of that will like incentivize them to have a really good first experience. And then if they got that promo code the first time and that delivery was just on point 10 minutes, caffeine was the best coffee they've ever had in a year, then you probably delivered on an incredible first experience and then you're going to have your customer hooked. Uh, so play around with that promo code, definitely. But for, yeah, for our mock-up, let's, let's include promo code like right around here. Perfect. And some interesting parts here, if we're doing delivery, then we'll need uh, like a delivery address. Um, so let's do delivery address, phone number. I think we talked about like having access to the driver and um, us being able to contact or having the barista contact us. So we have delivery address, phone number, and then maybe let's keep payment methods with pricing breakdown. Okay. There we go. So just naturally, you can kind of start seeing how we just have copy and we have some boxes, but this stuff starts filling out what components we'll need on the page, like when we actually get into the wireframing. Uh, so then I kind of will take this, we'll need a CTA to get from order review to like the big moment, place your order. Boom. And that's going to be like our last CTA to get this thing placed. And this is where like a lot of, I, I feel like we have some fun. Like there's a big moment here that we just had this customer go through this whole thing of building their coffee order. They're on order review. They may be feeling a little hesitant. It's Monday morning. Uh, they haven't had their caffeine yet. So like whenever I think of that last button of place your order, there's some opportunity for delight there. Like whenever you hit place order, maybe there's this really fun like coffee animation that says, oh, your coffee's being sent over to the barista. Maybe we show the barista's face, but like these are some of the things that I start thinking about and how I can bring delight um, over to the customer, especially when they're spending money. Like spending money is already sometimes fun, but <laughs> if, we can, if we can bring a little bit extra delight in the design with maybe animations or even like a still illustration that just really brings that pop of color and excitement, this is the opportunity. So I'm going to put a little note here for me. Like sometimes I'll get crazy like this and say, drop in submission animation and then if i have some ideas like coffee jumping from the bottom of the screen and you know animations might seem like oh it's this big thing that you have to put into the product but tomorrow i'm going to show you a um plugin and a website where you can get animations and developers absolutely love it uh, and you can include it in your apps. You can play with it. You can adjust it in After Effects. Uh, so we'll go over some of that more high fidelity animation stuff tomorrow uh, once we get into finalizing our design. So place your order CTA is going to go um, to order status and tracking. And that's kind of going to be the, like the last part of this, at least for what we're trying to do here. And then order status and tracking, I'm going to just copy this section. Let's move this over. And then we need a map. So I'm going to I have like duplicates of all of this stuff too, huh? Map. Let's do a live map. Um, we want to see where our driver is. Let's just see where our coffee is. It doesn't really matter where the driver is. Where is our coffee? Where is our coffee? 
Maybe we want to call the driver just in case. We talked about having you know different interests depending on uh, if you are busy. You might not want to call, but if I'm like right before a big project and I'm just counting down the minutes, maybe I just want to check in or send him a text. So I'm going to do call and text driver. Um, and then maybe that's it there. We didn't really collect too much in terms of what we needed on the order status in our affinity diagram, but um, you could. You could definitely, if you get stuck in a way that you say, look, I feel like we should provide more content here, then you can always go back to that drawing board and just double check to say, hey, maybe you wanna go follow up with some customers and say, how could you make the tracking or the order status experience a little bit smoother? So here we are. Uh, we've done, we've put quite a bit in motion right here. Uh, we have our homepage where we have a search, trending coffee, popular coffee. How long will it take for coffee to arrive? And we could probably do this. I'm going to put like time of day because um, we kind of, it could be difficult time of day. Depending on maybe if it's, if it's early morning, we could get it faster. Um, or not. And then on home, I'm also going to put, since we talked about delivery and pickup, let's do like location. So locate, customer location. And some of these parts right here, like customer location didn't come up whenever we did the affinity diagram, but then you got to put on your little technical hat and think, okay, if someone were to launch this app for the first time, we need to be able to know if the coffee shop is in their location. Uh, and if it is, then great. And if it's not, then you can see where we can go down some edge cases. Because if we're not in their location, then like just talking this through with you guys, it's like, okay, we might need an edge case for uh, we're not in your area. And that's unfortunate, but you know, as part of like a growing business, it's okay. They're, they're not gonna be in everyone in, in every region, every district. Um, but the idea here is that we don't want a negative experience. We'll just say, hey, this coffee shop's not in your area. And maybe you ask for like an email address or a name and a phone number. And that way, people who are interested or downloading the app in those regions are now showing interest. And then that kind of helps you as a company navigate, hey, we've got 300 people interested in coffee in this place that we don't have as a market yet. Maybe we can go in and reach out to them. So little things like that, I think, get uh, CEOs and sales members and marketing people really excited about really merging the two with like the product and marketing and sales and just everything in general becomes one once again. Uh, and they know that you're not leading, leaving anything off the table. We so have, um, Kanumili that says, uh, this is a very comprehensive affinity diagram, good starting point. And I think, yeah, you're really helping people learn how to utilize insights into this. So good props to you. And then also so, Corey um, suggests favorites on the homepage. Favorites, yes. Yeah, so favorites is an interesting one here because now as we start talking about favorites, we start thinking about our first time experience versus a returning customer. And like a lot of the times those two are going to fall on different journey maps because a first time customer is now having the friction of creating an account. Or if we're going to talk about data science and machine learning, well, now we can start learning about preferences and personalization. So favorites is a really fun one because it's a very lightweight version of letting the customer provide entry points and data into the app so that we could suggest better coffee for them. So that is an incredible point. And I'm going to put a note here. Let's do like, not in your area. I'm going to pull this out. And let's do like home first time. First time user. And then I'm going to do home returning user. And it's good to really document this stuff out. Again, props to the engineering teams because we have our own version like diagrams of what we think that user flow looks like. But I guarantee you, you ask them to look at the architecture and it is a very different story that they see versus <laughs> what we see. Uh, so let's do returning user favorites. 
So, and I would argue that like favorites probably should go above trending because if I favorite something, like I want that to be above all the other stuff. So let's do my favorites. And let's do uh, recent orders. That's another one. If I'm returning and have I already placed an order, like, I don't know about you guys, but I usually order the same two or three coffees. So if that's just one tap on the homepage and I don't have to go out and build that order every single time, then I just feel like now the app has taken so much frustration out of the process for me. So yeah, good point on um, returning user versus first time user. And then what you can do in this is you could either make like, you can see how this affinity diagram turned into kind of a user journey, kind of a wireframe. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a hybrid of things here. Uh, but the key is just making sure it's organized for you. Like if you understand it and you can work through it, at the end of the day, you'll probably design a much cleaner version of this to present to the team and stakeholders who you're working with. But just make sure you keep your own stuff pretty organized. So I'm going to move this over um, to this section so that we can keep it in mind, uh, but really focusing on this first time experience. All right. Oh, here's my little boxes over here. Let's delete those. So now that we have the basic roots of this, y'all, we are going to jump in to like designing for the device because now we have all the building blocks of a home page. Here's what we need. We have an item page with, again, important to look for those CTAs, because if you have a page like this with all this content uh, without a CTA or like a direction to get to the next step, then you know there's an issue in the architecture. So it's really important to make sure there's no dead ends. And usually if you don't catch this in like this phase right here, when you're prototyping this stuff in XD and like tapping and interacting with your screens, you'll find the dead end. The only issue is that it's much easier to find it earlier <laughs> than later, because then you may have to change way more than you anticipate it. Um, so I'll kind of look at homepage. I see search. So I can see search within open like a search field. I see trending coffee. And under trending coffee, I would have item one, item two. Popular coffee, maybe it's the same. Like we'll have item one. Item two, how long will it take? So this is, this is a little merger here because this isn't necessarily a signifier or an affordance of any sort, but it's, it's, it's content that we wanna include on the homepage so that we can set those expectations. So what I'll do is say, how long will it take for coffee to arrive? I'm gonna cut that one and I'm gonna put this in a post-it note right here on the side and put like um, copy our home page. Again, I don't wanna lose any of the stuff that we've captured. I just wanna try and keep these pages a little bit more focused so that I don't um, get distracted with it all. And then time of day, um, that was gonna be how long. So I'm gonna cut that. We have a question from Ahmed. Um, he's asking, are the blue post-its with the features list, the lo-fi wireframes or part of the affinity map? Yeah, it's kind of both. So like this came, this is the nice thing about the, um, the whiteboard plugin with XD. It's like the blue post-its and the yellow post-its kind of come with it uh, and trying to get you set up. But as you could tell, it kind of morphed into like just moving things around on our artboard and then we've built on it. But the next step, what we're going to do is take this and make it a much more like identifiable wireframe. Uh, and that means drawing boxes, showing uh, where these things are going to connect to. What I usually call this, if you guys have read, it's um, like Basecamp's shape up methodology. They call it breadboarding. And it is like the most rough version of just drawing some things, sketching some things, attaching lines to each side to move throughout like each section of the app. And that's kind of what this is. I don't know if it's super common, like if it's a thing that all designers like to do, but what I do like about it is how rough and fluid it keeps. Like I try and stay away from um, identifying something or labeling it as, or it isn't. So a wireframe is like people have a very specific expectation of what that should look like. 
and we will get to that. Uh, but the thing here is just trying to keep it as like fluid as possible. Yeah, I feel like people have different names for things and defined for depending on their workflow. Like for me, this would be more like, what is the the, the content and features? And I want to know that um, beforehand as well. Um, so I think that, yeah, everyone has a little different names for what they do. And yeah. sometimes they don't have a name for it, but they just do it. So I think that's, yeah, it's a good point that we don't all have to have the same name for everything too. I agree. And like, I think as an industry too, it becomes... Like every morning, I don't know about you guys, but I'm like reading Medium every Monday and I'm just seeing so many new design articles that's like, check out this new UX methodology, which I love that we're like trying to get a bit more sophisticated and focused on it. But man, I, it's like I struggle just keeping up with all the titles of the, of the exercises and the things that we can do. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's like, let's just build some incredible products. But I understand that that's a process in itself. <laughs> but, to, but to kind of piggyback off of that, we're going to move from this hybrid of our affinity diagram to bread. This is kind of like affinity, breadboard, user flow. Let's call it that. That's like a, <laughs> we should come up with a hybrid name for it uh, into our boxes. So I'm going to take this uh, home, like this whole thing, and I'm going to move it next to my phone. Um, and sometimes like the, the device and the deliverable is going to change. Like if you're designing an interface for a dishwasher or a refrigerator or a car, like the medium is always going to change. So that's why I also like just keeping this methodology as a very fluid way, because you could give this to a designer who has never designed an app before, uh, and they can look at it and they can say, oh yeah. I see where you're going with this from this part to this part without them getting into the nitty gritty of, oh, it's a phone, it's an app. So let's get started with our wireframe though. Um, so here's our homepage. This is our empty app that we have right here. And I usually like to start my uh, like homepage with some open, exciting message. So I'm going to say something like, <laughs> Let's drink coffee. <laughs> so I'm going to put that here. Y'all grid. Here's another one. Let's turn on our grid. <laughs> Let's make sure that we're all lined up here. Some people, so I, I designed with like a 20 pixel grid on both sides, which kind of goes against the status quo. I feel like most people are working with their eight or 16 point. Uh, to me, eight always just feels too tight and 16 is just still not loose enough on the on the edge so you'll see right here i have a four column grid uh and i'm starting with like a 20 point grid um padding or margin right here uh with let's drink coffee first and then i'm gonna look at my type size so you can see this typeface Human Pro. So this comes with the, like that whiteboard plugin that we use, but I'm going to play with Open Sans. Open Sans is one of those typefaces that I feel like I use on many apps. Um, so if you're familiar with the typeface, I, I usually like stick to it for, for a while. And then I'm going to change type size a little bit uh, and then line this up right here. So let's drink coffee is our opening line. And then we need, first thing up here is gonna be search. So let's build a box. We're gonna hit this little rectangle tool right here and then build our box right there. And then you can see our sizing right here. So we have a width of 335. So I always work with 20 point grid. So I know like 335 is centered with 20 points on both sides, 20 pixels on both sides. And then I'm going to adjust my height to, to 50. I usually stick with that as like a very comfortable. We think about like thumbs and how difficult it is with big thumbs on these small devices, especially with older folks. Um, keep in mind, like 44, I think, is now the industry standard for making sure that that size is big enough for someone to interact with. So I usually like to bump it up a little bit to 50 just to give it a little extra space in there. Um, 
And then I'm going to copy. Let's drink. Because this is our search bar. So y'all can see in XD, I have the plugin section open right here. But I'm going to toggle over to the layers so that we can try and keep this stuff a little bit organized as well. Um, XD also has a nice little component section here. So there's a bunch of character styles that you can assign. So let's say we wanted to take this one uh, and I have it set at Open Sans 24 bold. If I hit this little plus right here, you can see that that character style was added. Uh, and that way, if you need to reuse this style, then you can make sure you aren't creating 20 different variations of that uh, typeset. So we have that one right there. Let's drink coffee. We're going to put kind of like um, a prompt to. So let's find coffee. We also had a question from Raphael. Um, he said, since you're starting with 20 pixels, do you go by 20 pixel increments for everything? Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. So it can get, what I find is that I'm normally like I use 20 as that base to kind of move things around and make sure that I'm aligned with everything. But like sometimes I'll find myself switching over to 16 on the inside and sometimes I only have 20 on the outside. So like you can see right here that my margins on the outside are much larger than my margins in the middle right here. And again, I think it's a lot of that is preference for me is that whenever type is so close to the side of the device, it almost feels just like more scrunched, like it feels like it needs more breathing room uh, within the UI. So that's usually why I use 20 on the outsides. And sometimes I'll use like 12 between elements or 16 between elements um, and, and kind of just playing around with it visually to see if it fits. Um, not that big of a stickler when it comes to like the padding for it. Like I remember taking screenshots and sending it to developers and saying, oh, this is, this is not quite the padding that I was looking for. Like it <laughs> burned down and I, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I didn't mean to send that. I, I'm not that, that wild about it. But um, I usually just try and stick to 20 on the outsides and then I play around 16 or 12 between each surrounding elements uh, within the UI. So this obviously, this Let's Find Coffee is way too big um, for like some placeholder copy. So I'm gonna go in here and drop this down to like 16. Um, and then it's obviously also way too dark. So if we go in here, we can kind of play around with this gray um, and see how that looks. And then you can toggle on and off the grid to kind of see what that looks like. So let's find coffee. Let's turn that bold off. We don't want it to be too crazy. Um, and then sometimes I'll also play with iconography. Like even if I'm in this wireframing phase, like I see let's find coffee and I see this bar, but sometimes if I'm looking at it, it could be a little difficult for someone else to know what I'm trying to represent here. So let's go back to the Adobe plugins. There's this icons for design. Let me just type in like search and see. And there's a ton of icons in here that you guys can choose from, but I'm just gonna drop in this one right here, just kind of rough, rough and in place. Okay, so we have our search bar and the next thing I'm gonna do is kind of go down our list of things that we need. So we have search, let's move this down a little bit and let's do trending coffee. And I don't want this category title to be as powerful as this section. So I'm actually gonna drop this down as well to like 18. Okay. And maybe we move this up just a little bit. And then I'm gonna turn my grid back on and let's start drawing out our rectangles. So we have this one, let's do just straight boxes for this. And then I'll fill them just so that they have a little bit more depth to them. And then you'll see I'll copy this and move that over. So trending coffee, and then I'll kind of turn off this grid here to see where we're at. Um, and then we can kind of look at our 
our spacing around here. This looks good. That looks great. Um, so we have, let's say trending coffee is our section. Then we have item one, item two, and then popular coffee. So I'm going to just group this around. And I'm going to go back to layers. And Adobe's kind of like this jumping game too, because if you're playing with your components and you're playing with the plugins and your layers, like you kind of find yourself clicking between a cluster of them there just to get the tools that you want, but you'll get much faster with it. I'm gonna call this like trending coffee section. Okay. And same thing, let's group this too. We want our search bar to be, so I'm gonna command G, search. Also a good little tip is what I'll try and do when I bring in icons. I may not use this icon like at the end whenever we're doing more of the high fidelity, but I'm gonna mark it for export just in case. Because sometimes you get your assets already and you didn't update anything because you ended up being happy with it. And then it gets over to developers and they're trying to gather like your assets that they're gonna use for it, but it's not exportable. So then they ping you, it's this big old thing that, well, you forgot to get it ready. Uh, so trick is, is even if you're gonna use it, I just like to go ahead and mark it for export. And then I'll probably like name this search icon, perfect. And then our next section that we have right here is popular coffee. So let's go ahead and grab that. Again, I went also, ahead and just. Sorry, oh, yeah. uh, we also have another question from Ahmed saying, um, asking, continuing the conversation on accessibility, who is usually responsible for making sure your app is in compliance with a small team at a startup? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I don't know if uh, Kayla is still on the chat with, with us right now, but this was a thing that she and I had talked about a while because like, in enterprise, they have people who are making sure that your color contrast is really accessible and passing all of those rules. Uh, but in startups, you kind of have to defend that user group. Uh, and the way that I explain it to other people that I'm working for in startups is that if it's accessible, for people who, who have color blindness or some type of issue with contrast readability, you nail it for them. Then in contrast, you're gonna make it a smoother experience for everyone else. So sometimes it can be kind of hard to sell that accessibility in terms of your color grading or your shading and picking your hues and saturation. But as a designer for a startup, you're kind of representing the best practices and you're bringing that to the table. So I would recommend just having that conversation with um, whoever it is that you're trying to pitch the design to or get all into the same, onto the same page. So I'm gonna yeah. move. We also have um, a question around something you just showed, which was the export. Um, Kanumili is asking, what is Mark for export? What does that mean exactly? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So mark for export means that whenever you share, so right now we're in the design phase right here, but XD has a couple different versions. They have design, prototype, and then share. So whenever you share this, your developers are gonna want access to your assets, your style guide, your um, like type sizes, all of that. So you can go ahead and create different types of share links right here, where we have design review, development, presentation, user testing and custom. So what that export button allows them to do is that they can click on, if I were to create this link and then generate it, I can send that link over to the dev team or maybe attach it to a Jira ticket, whatever it is, and they can download the assets directly from your Adobe XD file. Uh, and that prevents from you having to zip up all your assets and then delivering one big folder to them. They can really experience the entire design and then as they need assets, they can directly take it from XD. So just a little way to make that whole handoff process a bit easier uh, for you and the developers at the end of the day. So we have, going back to our sections, we have search, trending coffee, popular coffee. Oh, let me change this. This isn't trending. This is popular. And then we have items right here. Uh, and then we need location. That was a, a big one right here. So I'm gonna draw another rectangle. 
like this is going to be where we put let's just feel that sometimes i'll take sections to like call this location bar that line that up here let's group this section oh. i'm gonna call that popular coffee okay turn off our grid and now thinking about navigation we may not know what sections we need on our nav bar but it's a good practice to just say okay let me draw one and if we don't use it, that's okay. But at least we'll have one uh, in the case that we do need it. So I'm gonna do like another little section right here. Turn that off, put this on the bottom. Location bar. Label that. And then drop that down. Okay. So you can see here, we're getting a feel for our homepage. Um, we have some of our sections right here. And then it's a good start to kind of just start looking at it and say, okay, we have some basic roots of a wireframe. <laughs> I think that's what we were talking about in the chat earlier is like, when do we get to this part of starting to get into this phase? So now what I'll start looking at is where do we put the titles or where do we put maybe those pricing and those calories and all those things. So. I'm gonna move this down and I'm gonna just look at this card itself. Actually, I'm gonna ungroup this. Hit T for text and let's give this like coffee, let's call it something. Let's do caramel cold brew. That's what I'm drinking, let's do that. Um, I'm gonna drop down that size to 16, maybe. 14, and then thinking about some of the things that we wanna put right here, definitely price. So let's do price first. So let's just say that's 4.99 plus our caffeine, well, 150, why not? One hundred milligrams of caffeine. And then I think we talked about calories. So let's just say, how much, how many calories are in a caramel cold brew? I don't know, 400? Maybe somebody knows in the chat. Calories. Probably a lot. <laughs> yeah, is, that, is 400 a good? Like, is, is that too much? Is that not enough? That sounds no. about right, four or 500 I calories. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. I don't know if that, if that's, that's normal, okay. Um, also, we had a great question from Voodoo Val earlier talking about resources. Do you have any online resources you recommend for beginners who are just trying to, to learn? Yeah, um, I guess it kind of depends like which part of the process. Like I feel like there's so many good YouTube channels and uh, subscriptions. Medium is really good. Like the UX Collective I go to all the time uh, in terms of like content that you can read on Medium. The Interaction Design Foundation was also a really good one for me. I remember just like popping in there every now and then and taking a new certification or a new course just for the fun of it and really engaging with other designers in the community. Um, yeah, YouTube, Medium. Yeah, those are I feel great. Like, I feel like those are the, the big hitters there. Coursera, I saw there was a new like UX Google course on Coursera that I'm checking out. So that one should be fun. Um, but yeah, I think try there. Uh, part of that too is like figuring out what you're interested in. Like, is it the UI side of it? Is it the UX, the research, the um, like style guide portion of building the app? There's so many pieces I think that just go into doing that. Um, the sky is the limit. Also, Galmai looked it up and it's 230 calories according to Google. Oh. Google. Not but bad. Not, not my not my caramel ones. I'm like one of those people that like extra, extra, extra caramel sauce uh, people. <laughs> or are they just like sitting there pumping like tin pumps? Yeah, I'm like, there? take off the top uh, if you can and just pour it. <laughs> so we'll do 230. Maybe that'll make people not feel as bad about it if it's only 230. 
So I think that this is like a good card. We can kind of see the, the sizes. Another pro tip here is that XD has an app. So it's really, it can be misleading to just like design in XD and not really know what it looks like on the device. So like they have a preview mode right here that'll allow you to get to that. You just like click on your artboard and then you hit play. So you can see this is the full device of, this is an iPhone 10. So the dimensions we have is 375 by 812, but I'll usually just plug in my phone and then XD has an app that you can download on the app store and really interact with your design while you're designing it. And that'll give you a feel for, is your type size too small? Is it too big? Uh, because it's re it really does just, you, you get so close to the computer. Uh, you're not checking to see really how that, that's contrasting or even if the type size is good enough. So definitely recommend downloading that XD app uh, and trying out your design there. So now that we built this card, I'm actually like gonna backtrack this, delete this. I'm gonna group this and call it like trending coffee card. Um, I'm gonna make a component of it. You can hit command K or you can, Adobe has this little component plus. You tap on that, you'll see it kind of turned it green. Uh, and then now if I make a copy of this, and I do anything crazy, like let's say if I update this to 20, you can see how this would really become helpful if I had a whole page of like 200 trending coffee cards and the client says, hey, I actually wanna bump that type size up maybe two pixels or two points or so. You could do that with a component and save like five hours of time. Uh, and sometimes it can be difficult to figure out what should be a component and what shouldn't. But what I normally do is I'll make the component early. And then if I don't use it, that's okay. I made it and I can save myself some time uh, down the road. So I'm going to keep that for trending coffee. That looks pretty good. Um, and then let's do the same thing for popular. So I'm going to take, and maybe we treat popular a little bit differently. Like I'm already seeing that this is not gonna be enough room for our copy size, but let's do, I'm gonna do a text layer here and do, what's a popular one? Um, let's do like a Old hot. Group. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> but what about, we were to hit that. <laughs> what, about pe what about peppermint? Does anyone do peppermint? Peppermint. Like pumpkin. Ooh, pumpkin. Okay, let's do that. Pumpkin. Let's do, let's call it like a pumpkin brew. I don't know what that would taste like, but. Sounds like it could be interesting. I'm gonna do 14 for that. Um, and then again, we're gonna to wanna to pull that price. So I'm gonna copy that stuff in there and bring it down here. I'm gonna turn my grid back on and kind of align that stuff to this side. And I'm actually gonna delete, like I'm gonna ungroup this stuff. I'm gonna delete these things. Cause I can already get a feel for, okay, that's not enough real estate to cover this section. Um, so now I'll turn my grid back off and kind of look at what's my 13. Oh, we need, y'all know me, I'm gonna do 20 right there. Um, and then let's pick that up a little bit. Let's do eight right there. So we have an M, let's make this image a little bigger too. Put that grid back on. Uh, maybe we go. Something like that. Okay. So now I'm going to make this artboard larger. Double click into there. Oh, and y'all see this little like dragger thing right here? This is nice because that's telling me, okay, Cody, you are that close to being within the original viewport of this device. So I'm working in a 375 by 812 iPhone 10. Uh, but that could change. Like if I was on something smaller, if you know that most of your customers are like an iPhone 4 with that little center touch button, which my mom is still on, uh, I might design for that device size instead of something larger <laughs> like this. So we have our pumpkin brew right here. Um, and I'm going to keep, keep this. Like it doesn't look terrible. Um, I'm going to group this. Let's call this like popular coffee. 
item and then make it a component. So what we could do, oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I was gonna say, we also had a question that was asked a few times from a few people. Alexandra and Kanumili is asking, um, how important is it to use the material design and iOS guidelines in your wireframes at some stages or do you define your own design system? Yeah, I usually define my own. Like I think the part of that really comes down to understanding the apps that your customers are gonna use and then try and replicate those UI patterns. So if I'm working with a customer and I've done a bunch of research and I know that they're using uh, maybe Pinterest or maybe they're using Twitter, whatever those apps are, I'll sometimes download like a complete UI pattern, like take a bunch of screenshots and study the UI components to figure out what makes this button work for that customer. Because if they're using it, they're gonna be accustomed to it. So I don't want to try and make a customer relearn a UI pattern, but I also don't always like sticking to like the stereotypical material design or iOS guidelines in terms of colors or maybe their rules on typography. But I also don't want to go too far so that whenever the customer launches the app for the first time, they don't know where to begin. Uh, so it's kind of a every app I will approach in a different way, depending on who the customer is. Yeah, thanks for answering that. So yeah, this is another cool one. So I, I just made this one into a component. There's this repeat, repeat grid button. Watch this. Ah! <laughs> 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 I played with this for the first time a while back and was like, this would save so much time. Um, and then here was another fun one right here. So we just did the repeat grid option. So I'm going to pull this out like that. And then we want to make sure that there's like some horizontal scrolling that can happen right here. So there's these options in XD where it says like scroll groups. So we created this group. I'm going to turn on horizontal scrolling and then I'm going to pull this out so that it will scroll this entire width. So to kind of check that work there, I'm going to click on this device, hit play. And then you can see how now we can start interacting with a horizontal list right there. And it's only three, but maybe we want to do like five or six or seven. The idea is that we're just trying to create some components, some interactive components that we can start interacting with and feel how this thing is going to work once we add some more visuals. And then it kind of brings me to the next thought. Okay, we have trending. We have these two static sections of like, a view all. What if I just want to view all the trending coffee? That's right there. I'm going to drop this down and make, let's do this a little bit smaller. Like maybe that's 12. A little accessibility thing here too is I usually like to put underlines. It's not sexy. It's not like whenever I look at that, it's not a button. It's not super nice, but I think that we have these like mental models of hyperlinks to know that it should be blue and it should be underlined. So sometimes even in this like wireframe stage, I will mark that as something that I want to link as a button and then maybe give it a color. Um, like maybe I'll give it that orange color. And I'm kind of mixing that wire, a low fidelity, high fidelity a little bit. But now that's to make sure I don't forget that whenever I get back to the screen, that I need to make sure that I'm taking into account that this is a navigational pattern that needs to take the customer to another screen to view all. And then popular coffee right here, which we have our scroll group on. And now let's get back to the location bar. Like let's, let's add a little bit more detail here. So we played with delivery. So let's do, um, maybe it's deliver two. Let's drop down this size again. I think this needs to be a bit bigger too. We want to have some, some space. And then I'm going to put that back into, maybe that's 14. Let's put an address. Let's do 258 Caramel, C-A-R-A-M, Caramel Drive. Let's do Lafayette. Lafayette LA, 70508. And what I'll start thinking about here is like text length. 
So this works for this address, 258 Caramel Drive, Lafayette, LA. But we also need to make sure we're keeping in mind the edge cases. Like what if this was Caramel Street Avenue Roadway? <laughs> So obviously that's probably not, this is not a real one, but what this kind of does is forces us to think, like we wanna break this design as we're wireframing it. We wanna say, how could we accommodate a really long address? And maybe this is the answer. Maybe it's, you know, we put city or maybe we put the street or we could even do some pagination. Maybe we put like some dots right there and we cut it off. Um, but when it comes to address, I kind of feel like may, I should probably put the whole address there, like just to make sure that we capture the whole thing. Um, and I'm gonna lighten this up a little bit. I'm gonna take this border off. I'm gonna definitely wanna make sure it's differentiated from my bottom in there. Put my grid on, make sure all this stuff is lining up on the sides, okay. Great, deliver to this address. Um, maybe we wanna change it though. Let's go to plugins. I'm gonna put it like a um, arrow. Again, y'all, this plugin for XD is icons for design. They kind of will start you with a bunch of like basic icons that you can use for your wireframe. Once you're doing high fidelity, I wouldn't stick with like grabbing icons from a bunch of different kits just because of consistency issues. But like for this, what we're trying to do is just gather the basic elements. And um, probably not an arrow like that. Let's think of like a, like a carrot arrow almost. Here we go. iOS down. Well, so we just have a few minutes left, about three minutes left. Oh, um, yeah, time, <laughs> time flew by. <laughs> is it already? Oh. It is. <laughs> All right. Well, this will kind of get us set up for getting our tomorrow. What we're going to do is we're going to take our wireframe and really start dressing it up, like looking at images, how to choose colors, um, how to get imagery, why imagery is so important. Uh, but yeah, I think that this is like a good start of our wireframe here. I think we've kind of captured what we want it to uh, in our affinity diagram. What do y'all think? Yeah, I think it looks super awesome. You yeah. really went in depth for like what you want to have on the screen, which I always think is the challenge, especially for new designers. And um, and now seeing it all put together is, is, looks really good. And I can see why you did everything. And so I think that's great. And um, we have a question for Raphael from Raphael. Sorry, he says, or he or she says, how should you approach an existing product in terms of improving it? Yeah, I, I usually approach it with talking to the customer. Like, I think it's very natural for us to want to see something that needs to be fixed and put a huge slap of paint on it. Like, I, I was trained in graphic design, so visual comes very natural to me in terms of UI elements. But what I usually will do is try and figure out what are the real pain points? Like, what is that customer really struggling with so that we deliver not only on a visual revamp, but we're delivering on the, the like structure of how we can improve that product. And normally that means bringing in a lot more people. That's uh, a big engineering team sometimes, or it takes a little longer to figure that stuff out. But I think really practicing some constraints and not just going out and redesigning the whole new product from what customers are already experiencing is gonna help smooth in that rollout and really make it a smooth transition for the customer at the end of the day. Yeah, awesome. And then Rachel's just saying, awesome job, Cody. You did great. Just a yeah. great explanation yeah. for everything that yeah. you're doing, really walking through your process, uh, why you're doing certain things, which I think is was really insightful for everyone. And like I said, the chat was popping off. People are really excited. There was even more questions yeah. than I was able to ask you because I was like, oh no, <laughs> we're not gonna let he's not gonna be able to actually design. This is just gonna be Q and A out two hours with Cody. So yeah. um yeah. a lot of action. What I'll do so, too is I'll get more of the wireframe set up so that tomorrow we can get into like the really fun part of putting the color to this and uh, wiring everything up. So I'm really excited about doing that with you guys tomorrow.
Yeah, I'm super excited to see it and the plugins and some of the things that you said you were going to share tomorrow. Um, so those of you guys who have kind of maybe come later in the episode today, um, wondering what happened today and what we'll see tomorrow. Um, we did, a, or not we, it was mostly Cody, but <laughs> Cody showed his process <laughs> for thinking about what features need to be on his app. He designed a few wireframes here, and then tomorrow he's gonna do those final touches, make it beautiful, um, put all the, the wow factor into it. And so don't miss tomorrow, it's the same time. Um, it's 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 2 p.m. And also do not miss, don't forget to stay tuned for the XD Creative Challenge coming up immediately after this stream. Cody, thank you so much for sharing all this knowledge and absolutely. dropping so much stuff. Yes, absolutely. I can't wait to pick back up tomorrow too. I'm excited. Yeah, super excited as well. All right, bye everyone. Thank you so much for participating so much in the chat. I appreciate it. And we hope to see you guys tomorrow. Bye y'all.